Welcome everyone to another in the series of Unipower webinars. This is John Ely. I'm the Vice President of Marketing. Uh, I will be joined on the presentation today by John Rambin. John, you wanna introduce yourself very quick? Hi everyone, I'm John Rambin, Applications Engineering and Technical Support Manager for Unipower. Thanks, John. Great, John and I today are gonna to be uh, demonstrating DC power systems and we're gonna be talking about our large scale power systems up to 600 amps. So if you are or are not familiar with Unipower, we are designers and manufacturers of DC power systems. And we really hang our hat on building very robust, very reliable systems that are configurable to customers' orders. We serve a variety of different markets, uh, telecom, data centers, uh, utility, energy storage, for today, the large power systems fit into a, a couple areas, telecom, uh, cable networking, also some small data centers and uh, utility private networks. All of our DC power systems are manufactured and or configured in our facility in Dunlap, Tennessee. This is a very nice state of the art facility for every system that ships into North America comes through this facility in Tennessee. So let's talk a little bit about the range of DC power systems. We build uh, small, medium, and large. And you see on the, on the left-hand side, small systems, we consider those under 60 amps output. Uh, medium systems, anywhere from 70 to 200 amps. And large-scale systems, which we're talking about today, 200 amps and above. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about our systems that are rack mount 5U to 7U. Uh, so these are our, our largest rack mount units. On the upper left, we have a unit that we call an M31. It has DIN rail breakers and two rows of rectifier power. Uh, the unit below that is an M38, and that is a bullet breaker distribution and up to three rows of power rectifiers. Regardless of the system, they all use the same controller. And that controller is on the upper right. That is the ACX controller. So one controller operates every one of these guardian power systems that we're gonna be talking about today. And also the modules are consistent. On the lower right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a guardian 48 module. Those are 48 volt. Typically 3000 watt uh, modules, we have other sizes and we're gonna talk about that a little later, uh, but you'll see those Guardian modules are standard on both of these units as well. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to John Rambin and John's gonna take us to, to some of the engineering specifics and configurations of the MS31 and the M38. All right, so we're looking at the front view here, moving from left to right, we see the, um the breaker, we've got a horizontal array of breakers. The first breaker positions are battery breakers. These can be deployed with two, four, or six battery breaker positions. Any um, positions occupied by battery breakers uh, use up some of that horizontal array, and the remainder are utilized by the load breaker. So depending on how many battery breakers that we deploy, we can have 20, 17, or 14 load breaker positions. Down below, you have the power section. This can be one or two power shells, allowing four or eight total rectifier positions. Just below the horizontal array of breakers, you have the ACX advanced controller position. Um, that provides remote connectivity, either using USB for local PALCOM sessions or ethernet for remote PALCOM sessions. Now we're looking over the top into the distribution housing of the MS-31. On the back left, we see the AC inputs. AC inputs can be either bulk input, that's what we're looking at here, or we can provide individual inputs for each rectifier position. Then moving to the right, we see the battery return bus um, oriented vertically here. And then moving a little 
closer to us, we see the load return bus where we have compression terminals for all the load returns. Then we see the top sides of the battery and load breakers. Terminations to the battery and load breakers are made directly to the top of the DIN breakers using the compression terminals provided on the DIN breaker itself. Now we're looking at the front of the M38. M38 system is very similar to the MS31, except it utilizes bullet breakers, which are very popular in North America. Difference here is the battery breakers are on the right side of the horizontal array. These can be deployed in zero, four, or eight total battery breaker positions. And any remaining space for the horizontal array is utilized by the load breakers. AC advanced controller is actually placed in the left position of the topmost power shelf, leaving three rectifier positions in that topmost shelf. And then we can have one or two additional power shelves just below the, the first position. So we can have three, seven, or 11 total rectifiers. Now we're looking at the M38 connections. Over the top of the distribution housing, we see in the back, the AC input enclosure allows terminations for individual rectifier feeds. Then looking inside the distribution enclosure just behind the load distribution, the alarm and signals board is directly behind the load return bus. Battery feeds again are on the right side with terminations made on bus bars just above where the battery breakers plug in. Similarly, the load terminations are made just above where the load breakers plug in. Looking at the uh, bus bars, where the terminations are made, we're using very thick copper bus there. Reason for this is there's some thermal derating on these breakers when they're uh, mounted and installed side by side. So larger capacity breakers, 70 amps and above, there's some thermal derating that goes on unless we have a way to shed some of that heat. So above and below the breakers, the copper bus bar is at least a half an inch thick. The bus bars then become heat sinks that pull some of the heat that's being generated within the breaker out of the breaker. As a result, we don't have the thermal derating. We're allowed to deploy 70 amp and above breakers side by side without any thermal derating. A lot of uh, bullet breaker distribution requires that you have a space between breakers when operating the higher capacity breakers. You don't have to do this with the M38. Physical dimensions, we're looking again at the front of the MS31. We see our 1RU power shelves below and our distribution section above 4RU, total of a 6RU system here. Width is 19 inch. Overall depth is 16.9 inches. And we have adapters that allow us to install this 19 inch wide chassis into 23 inch applications as necessary. The front of the M38, again, is 19 inches wide. Um, height can be five, six, or seven U, depending on the number of power shelves deployed. And the overall depth, 21.6 inches. And again, we have mounting adapters that allow us to install this chassis in a 23 inch relay rack if necessary. Great. Thanks, John. Um, now, there's some features uh, on our Guardian systems, whether it's the MS31 or the M38, kind of common features across uh, all the product lines. Uh, first of all, we have 96, greater than 96% efficient rectifiers. So the, rec the rectifier modules that we plug into either one of these systems are, are, are high efficiency modules. This unit, this is showing the MS31. And again, the MS31 is a five or six U uh, package with DIN rail breakers. This one, you can have up to 480 amps 
regardless of the system, they're all controlled by the ACX controller, that, which has remote monitoring and control through our PALCOM system. Uh, the field, uh, the ACX controller is field replaceable and all of those modules are hot swappable as well. So this can all be repaired very easily in the field if need be. Communications on that controller are SNMP v3, so they're very secure. And we have status indicators on both the controller and on each individual module. So you can see, uh, get a good visual from the front of this unit when it's in operation, if everything's okay. Those, those status indicators are green, yellow, or red, indicating good uh, alert or alarm. Uh, you can have up to 10 Form C relay contacts on this M MS-31 and up to 20 load breakers. Uh, you can also have up to six battery breakers, but again, those are mutually exclusive. The more battery breakers you have, you have the less real estate for load breakers and vice versa. The front of that controller is an LCD uh, screen and there are control buttons on the side. You can set this uh, unit up and measure every parameter on the front of the controller, uh, but we recommend that you plug a laptop in and use the proprietary Calcom software. Uh, just more user-friendly to, to do it on a laptop. Uh, but if you need to, you, you can do it from the front, front of the unit. Uh, these are very easy to install. It's a rack mount unit um, designed for 19 inch racks. So they're very easy to install. And it's covered by uh, all major, major safety certifications. They're currently covered on UL. And as you know, uh, later in the year of 2020, we're going to see a new UL standard come into effect. All of our guardian systems, both this M31 and the M38, are going to be certified to the new standard and actually going to be dual certified. So they're they'll be certified to the current standard and also certified to the new standard. So either one that your customer needs, uh, you're going to be covered. Uh, all Guardian products carry a three-year warranty, and that is an industry-leading uh, warranty. Underneath the picture of the unit, you'll see uh, a little bit of a table there. This kind of leads back to uh, what John was talking about on the configurator. So we have a couple base units that we use to build those configurations up. For this MS-31, uh, your, your basic base model are going to be a 5U unit, which would have just one row of power modules, or a 6U unit, which would have what is shown here, the two rows of power modules. So you have your choice of five or six U. You also have a choice of AC inputs, either being a single bulk AC input or individual feeds for every one of those rectifiers. And the reason we offer this is in North America, we typically see folks wanting the individual feeds. Outside of North America, it's typically a bulk AC feed. Now, we've sold both in both locations, so it's not, it's not a hard line between the two, but it's customer preference. So that's why you see four base models here listed, uh, a 5U single, a 5U individual, a 6U single, and a uh, 6U individual. Uh, from there, on that configure, configurator, you choose your controller, your battery breaker, load breakers, and cables uh, accordingly. But these are the base models that we offer to build, build configurations up from. So very similar, uh, the M38, which is the bullet breaker unit. This comes in five, six, or seven U, depending on how many power shelves that, that you want to install. Features are pretty much the same with the exception that uh, of the M38, it's a little higher capacity where the M31 is a 420 out, amp output. This goes up to 600 amps. So it's a little bit higher power uh, on the M38. Uh, remote, remote monitoring, controller, communications, all those things are, are virtually identical uh, to the MS31. Here you can have up to 20 load breakers and up to eight battery breakers. But again, that's mutually ex exclusive. The more battery breakers you have, the less real estate you'll have for load breakers and vice versa. Again, the configurator, as John mentioned, will not let you make a mistake. It will not let you build an illegal configuration that has too many breakers in there. Uh, controllers, same, same touchpad because it's the exact same controller. Again, it's rack mount, very easy to install this unit. 
Certifications are the same. This is also going to be dual certified in UL. So current standard also will be upgraded to the new standard, which takes effect December of 2020 uh, and three year warranty. The table below uh, shows uh, our base models for the M38. For the M38, all the feeds are individual. There's no bulk AC feed for, for this unit. So they are all individual feeds for, for each uh, rectifier module. Your choices are a 5U 125 amp version, 6U 375 amp version, or the full 7U, which is 600 amp output. Again, that just that's, that's how many power shelves do you have underneath the distribution, one, two, or three. Uh, from there, it's just the same as uh, uh, the other system. You choose your controller uh, and choose your battery breakers, load breakers, cables, and, and so on. Again, the configurator won't let you make a mistake. It, it will configure everything that you put in there. Will, it will it'll alert you if, you if you're making a mistake or putting something in that's not, uh, that, that's not able to be built. So let's talk a little bit about the individual rectifier modules. These are Guardian rectifiers. Uh, they come uh, in a two 2,500 or 3,000 watt variety. And you'll see on the table there, I've got the 3,000 watt uh, version highlighted. Uh, and that would be the FMPE 30.48J. The reason I have that highlighted is that most customers, especially when we're talking about these large four and 600 amp units, they're gonna choose the highest power module. Uh, and, and rarely, if ever, do we sell uh, the lower power modules on these large power output systems. So that's why I have that highlighted. The other modules are available, but your customers probably will almost never choose a lower power module on a high power system. Uh, these are 48 volt modules, obviously, wide range of AC input uh, from 85 to 300 volts AC. Below 180 volts, they will derate. And we do this, this is programmed into the module. So it's a linear line that that, that unit derates. So if you know uh, that you're gonna have less than 180 volts in, maybe you've got a, a temporary 120 volt input that you need to run. We have a power curve that shows you exactly what the power output would be. But again, most every customer is going to run these well above 180 volts because they want full power out of the modules. Uh, very robust uh, unit here. There's no power D rating up to 55 degrees C. So these units will put out full power, full load at a 55 degree ambient temperature. So very, very rugged, uh, reliable units. And in that vein, we've got well over half a million of these installed worldwide. The ACX controller, this is really the, the heart of the entire system. And again, the ACX is common across all Guardian units, including the two Guardian units we're talking about today. Uh, we'll support up to 64 rectifiers. And you know, in these units, you saw, I think, up to 11 uh, rectifiers. But if you needed a to scale up to a larger system, uh, the ACX can do that. It can control up to 64 in standard format and up to 256 by adding a multiplexer board. So if you have questions on even larger systems than what we're showing you today, contact us and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you how we can design those for you as well. Um, built into the controller are a lot of really nice features. And one of the, one of the ones of my favorites is the battery test feature. This will actually do a battery discharge. It will send the batteries into the circuit by lowering the rectifier voltage below the battery level to force the batteries into the circuit. And then it will measure the discharge over time. So it gives you an accurate battery test. It logs all that data and the ACX has enough memory to log five years worth of battery test data. Those battery tests, they can be set up manually uh, or you can set them up automatically. Some customers run them two times, maybe three times a year. Uh, but no matter how you run that test, the ACX will record all that battery data for you and let you download that. When you do the uh, battery discharge test, you will get a, a level of remaining battery capacity. So get, it's kind of like a fuel gauge for your, your batteries. And also the ACX will disconnect the batteries when they discharge to a certain level. Typically in a 48 volt system, 42 volts is kind of the common point where we want to 
pull the batteries out of the circuit, uh, especially lead acid batteries, they'll, they'll get, become damaged if you discharge them too far. So before we let that happen, the ACX is smart enough to, to disconnect those batteries out of the system and protect them. Uh, along that vein, we also uh, have temperature compensation, again, with lead acid batteries when they're cooler, they like to see a little more voltage on the recharge. When the batteries get warm, they like to see a little less voltage on that recharge. The ACX uh, does that all automatically. Uh, we have a temperature sensor connected to the batteries so you know uh, how hot they're getting. The ACX will adjust the charge algorithm accordingly. The ACX also will log all of the system parameters. Uh, will also log site log. Uh, parameters. So if you have external conditions that you want to feed into the ACX and monitor those alarms, it'll do that as well. And examples of external uh, items external to the DC power system might be a generator, uh, might be generator fuel level. You might want to monitor that. It could be uh, doors, alarms, lighting, something inside the hut where these DC power systems are installed, you can, you can connect external alarms and view those through the ACX controller software, which is again, what we call PALCOM. That software is proprietary and we offer it at no charge. So that is the end of our, our presentation today. I'd like to thank everyone for their time in viewing. And I'd also like to thank John Rambin for helping me present. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. Look for us at unipowerco.com, and you can also find us on our YouTube channel under Unipower LLC. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.